Hi, my name is Jason Thomas and I'm the developer of FireJumpers Pro. And in this video tutorial, we're going to be talking about our new fire model. So let's get right into it here. So I've already preloaded uh, Waldo Canyon and uh, let's go into the fuel bed editor. So we've already discussed about the unit editor, the terrain editor, and the fuel bed editor is now the new, um, the new component here. So the way it works is let's grab, uh, let's say we're going to go with this uh, Rothermel's uh, surface fire spread model. And for the GR4 grass type 4 here, it says it's, uh, you know, the description, moderately coarse, continuous grass, uh, average depth of about two feet, spread rate, very high, flame length, high. Uh, when we come over here, we can take a look at the fuel load, and this describes the fuel load using the 1 hour, 10 hour, and 100 hour fuel load system. And so we actually come in here, this is 2.15, but if I were to delete here, you can see there's a prompt, and it kind of shows how to put the data in here, and so we separate it by commas. So we had two 0.15, which is the tons per acre, divide that by uh, uh, comma zero comma zero because it doesn't have any of the one hour, uh, 10 hour and 100 hour fuel loads. Then if we come down here, we have the rate of spread, uh, which is a very interesting component that allows me to calculate the rate of spread based on the mid flame wind speed. And so it actually creates a graph, and it actually has a curve. It's, a, it's actually a quadratic uh, equation here. And the idea is that you can see here, based off of the very low moisture levels, that a wind speed of 16 miles an hour will have a rate, a rate of spread of 443 chains per hour. Now, this is the very tall, very fast-burning grass. Uh, we can take a look over here, and you can see how the entire thing scales. We can go with high moisture. We can take a look and, and, and verify that. And what we do here is we also have... Th this allows to create the, the, the calculations, to create the curve. And the way it works is that we use this formula here, uh, which is the... Uh, it's a basic quadratic equation um, and the, the idea is that the Y is the rate of spread, the X is the wind, or the mid-flame wind speed specifically, uh, the min, uh, minimum, is the minimum rate of spread, and the maximum rate of spread, the Q is the exponent, uh, which is, you know, to the power of whatnot, and then the A is auto-calculated. So we actually sample this data here, okay, to come up with this data. So if I were to remove this, so let me just cut that out, you can see also here the prompt and it tells you how to insert this data, X, Y, then the min, the max, and then the components. So then when we paste this data in here, it actually updates this. So if we uh, were to change uh, some values here, um, you know, to, to anything at all, we can see that the graph actually updates itself uh, in real time. Now, from this rate of spread, later, when we actually update the wind speed, uh, we'll be able to give it a wind speed, and we're going to get a rate of spread for this terrain type. So this grass here, which is this area here. Now granted, actually, this is not the GR4 grass type, but this is the GR3, which is a slower rate of spread. But I just wanted to show with these graphs. Now we also have a flame length, which is calculated in exactly the same way. We give it a wind speed and it's going to be able to give us a flame length. And so here uh, you can see what this is. So as the wind speed increases, you can see, so at 11 miles per hour, we're going to have a flame length of 17 feet, and it just keeps going uh, up. Uh, and then we also have slope versus burn rate. So how much faster does the, you know, based on the number of degrees that it is climbing up, right? So at 20 degree slope, 
the burn rate is 316 uh, percent faster. You see, uh, you know, or if it's going downhill, um, then it's you know the the opposite uh, in 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 division. So yeah, so based on all of these properties, we get a fuel bed code uh, burn. So we can have a lot of different types. Uh, we were just playing around with some shrubs, and we used uh, the timber understory type five for the uh, for the forest. So let's take a look at now what it looks like. So we've got twelve miles an hour wind, and we're going to add some fire here. And actually, let's put a, put a little bit in the in the grass too. Now we're going to speed up time just so that we can get this going. Let's bring this up to here. And here we go. Now what I've done is we can actually calculate uh, the flame length. Okay, the flame length uh, of the fire is represented by the color that it is. So a red color is a very small flame length. And then all the way up to yellow, which is a much higher flame length. Now, if I were to increase the wind speed, we would expect the flame length to get higher. And so you will start to see everything starting to turn to yellow because all of a sudden the wind is just causing a much higher flame length. Uh, and so everything starts to burn. And as you can see, it is a much better random kind of feel to this fire because it's based off of real calculations. What's interesting is if I were to slow this back down, let's say to seven or eight, you'll notice that the fire starts to cool right down. The fire intensity has gone down by a lot, right? And so now all of a sudden the fire becomes more manageable uh, to fight. So it makes a, a, a really great uh, way to um, see the fire burn and its behavior. Now I do have a lot of extra additional information that I'm adding. So when I let me just bring this right down to to one time speed, so we are not rushing. Uh, if I were to hover over an area that has that is on fire, you will get this information over here. That's on the code. So let me just go here. So what it does is it tells me what the fuel code is, which is uh, TU5. The fire intensity is 125. Now that is a special calculation, which is basically multiplying the flame length uh, by the fuel load. So basically, you know, if you have a, 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 two foot a two foot flame length in an area that has a high amount of vegetation, it's harder to extinguish than a two foot flame where there's not a lot of vegetation. So it would require more water to extinguish and that kind of thing. And so when we take a look here, we have uh, the fuel load, which I represent using the 100, the one hour, 10 hour and 100 hour uh, to produce this number. There's some little calculations here and there. Uh, we have the base rate of spread, which is 5.76 chains per hour. This is based off of the um, wind speed. Uh, and then you have the real rate of spread, which is actually a little bit different. And that is because it's affected by the slope, which is at 101, and the percent angle to the head of the fire, which means that at 96%, it's mostly at the head of the fire, uh, which is over here. And then it will give you an approximate uh, spread time, which means that at two hours and 13 minutes and 11 seconds, this tile is going to spread. So when we take a look at the time at the top, which is now at two hours and five minutes and 11 seconds, uh, so basically, you know, in eight minutes, this tile is going to spread uh, to, to the other tiles. So let me come over here and we're just, actually, you know what, let me just keep that here. And I'm going to just start a new fire right here. Okay, so now when I add a unit, we can see here that the fire intensity is at 122 uh, here, which is the same if I were to hover. And 
what it is is that when this guy is spraying water, it's literally bringing down the fire intensity uh, by, in this case, zero minus 0 0.4 fire intensity per second. I guess you could go with kilowatts. Uh, you know, we'll probably be updating that soon. So yeah, so that is how it goes. So basically, it's going to take about a minute and a half to uh, to extinguish that tile right here. Now, if I were to increase the wind speed all of a sudden, now we're getting a much higher uh, rate of spread, uh, much higher fire intensities. Suddenly, let me just wait until this uh, starts to spread here. Oh, okay, we're running out of water. There we go. Oh, whoa, okay, now we're spreading. So let me come over here. We're going to add some water. And we're good. Okay, so let's bring this back down. Okay, so now this fire intensity is even higher because we have a higher flame length and um, and so that means that it's going to actually require more water to extinguish uh, this same tile uh, that it had. So yeah, so overall that is the new fire intensity model. Thank you.